My name is Bill Palmer. I uh, direct the Game Bird Research Program at Tall Timbers. A quail are extremely important to this region. Uh, the 400,000 acres of open piney woods that remain between Thomasville and Tallahassee and the surrounding areas are because uh, people purchased these lands many years ago to have areas to hunt quail and that uh, land use has not changed. So if it wasn't for quail, uh, we wouldn't have this beautiful landscape we're in. Yeah, so a brief history of the quail hunting in the area. They, uh, in the late 1800s, early 1900s, uh, landowners uh, came down from the northeast and purchased these lands for quail hunting. Um, they weren't used to the use of fire, and uh, so they stopped burning the woods. And quail plummeted quickly, so they invested in research. They hired a person to start doing some research and understand then that really was the uh, Herbert Stoddard who cranked up the research program here and, uh, and is one of the reasons why Tall Timbers is here today. Quail used to be very plentiful. In 1962, in Florida and Georgia alone, over 7 million quail were harvested by hunters. Today, it's less than 50,000. That's over a 99% decline. And the loss of quail is just an indicator species of the loss of the use of fire on the landscape. And one of the things we really promote at Tall Timbers is recreating these open piney woods, open oak savannas. And that's uh, so important uh, for our conservation of our wildlife in the southeast. But even uh, in the 1980s, uh, as recently as the 1980s, quail populations started to decline. People kind of lost their focus. And Tall Timbers uh, re-energized their research program. And since then, we are now at historically high quail populations. Yeah, one of the cool things about this area is that uh, the research we do is applied on the landscape. And so we give out information and managers apply it on thousands and thousands of acres every year. And if it works, then we get feedback from them. So it's kind of an adaptive thing. If, if the more information we get from the managers, the better our research is and vice versa. And it's helped maintain this area as the best quail hunting in the world. For the longest time, we kept a lot of our research local. Uh, a lot of the information was local, but this model of land management that produces timber, produces quail recreation, and all the threatened species is now being exported to other areas, South Carolina, Alabama, public lands around the southeast. Um, there's about a million acres of private lands managed for quail in the southeast, and that's a huge conservation value to so many species. Well, beyond the habitat management that we do here, really what drives wildlife populations, especially quail, is predation and how that all interrelates. And what's really cool here is we study everything from the snakes and the cotton rats and how they cycle over time and how that might interrelate with the Cooper's hawks and the red-tailed hawks. A good example would be in years where we have a lot of cotton rats, we have a lot of red-tails that migrate down and stay on the property. The red-tails are a predator of Cooper's hawks, which are a number one predator of quail. And so the red-tails actually keep the Cooper's hawks at bay down in the drains on the lake edge, other places. And our quail survival rates, even with all those red-tailed hawks around, actually increase and that creates a regional increase in quail populations. Those interactions, if we don't understand them, we won't be good quail managers or good wildlife managers. So we do a lot of research on quail, but since quail is eaten by so many species, we actually do a lot of research on a lot of other species as well. So ultimately, our research is about helping people have quail for hunting, I mean, that's what we do. And one of our studies is on supplemental feeding and how supplemental feeding helps uh, increase quail populations. And in fact, even though it's relatively expensive, we found it can actually double quail populations. And that's the kind of information we help landowners with, is how much you feed, how often, and so forth, so you can actually achieve their management goals. That's why they support our research. So this is really one of the most important things we use for quail research. It was designed here at Tall Timbers in the 80s by previous uh, researchers as a radio transmitter. Fits right over the bird's head. The transmitter lays on its crop where they're used to filling with seeds, so it really doesn't bother them and this is the antenna. We deploy, oh uh, boy, four to five hundred of these a year. They cost about 150 bucks a piece. So it's expensive to do quail research. Uh, you put out a hundred on an area and within a year there'll be 80 of them you'll pick up because of predation. About 20 of the birds will survive the year. Now he's really located or he's homed in on her. There's, there goes the bird across the field, just flushed it. This data is collected in the field pretty much seven days a week during the, the reproduction season. And then later in the afternoon, um, we'll enter it in the GIS system. So basically everything is recorded, spatially located in our computer system. And day to day, we know pretty much wherever one of our radio tag birds is, how their nests are doing, broods are doing, etc. Good work. Thanks, Jonathan. No Where our focus is and what we strongly believe in is that good science produces information for good management. And so the information people learn from tall timbers is science-based information. 
and that's why it works. For the future, if there's going to be quail in the southeastern United States and all the species associated with them, uh, we really need to focus on recreating their habitat. That's the number one focus. And we need to have more open piney woods that are frequently burned, and we need to have more oak savannas that are frequently burned, or else we're going to lose this species. It's already not being hunted in some states because there's so few, and uh, we would hate to see that go away for the whole southeast.